Today I'm making more test tiles because uh, I've been doing quite a lot of glaze testing recently. I throw them on the wheel as an inverted T shape and then <clears throat> what I do is I put black slip on the reverse so you can see what the glaze will do on two different clays. And this is one that's ready to go in. You just dip it once full way in and then again at an angle and you get two different thicknesses of glaze. Uh, and that will show quite a lot and on two colours. And actually I'll just grab this is some of my most interesting glazes to do. So this is what I call nebula and that is a lime blend of increasing copper. So from 0% copper to 2% copper you can see just how much actually there are more that, that way around. So it goes from sort of off white, slightly purpley white to very purple, white with green spots, bluey purple, and then greeny blue. And that's just an increase in copper. But all done on the little test tiles, they're very easy to throw. All you do is get a big ball of clay. I don't particularly care how much this is kilo and a bit, but you can do them smaller with less clay, or you can use loads of clay and actually pull up two sets of test tiles from the same uh, ball of clay, so you throw two walls essentially. So what you're looking to do is move all of the clay out, so like throwing a plate with no centre, and then pull the wall up into that T-shape but um, around the rim of the bat. Because I was only throwing test tiles I haven't wedged the clay very well. Um, the nice thing with these is they you can make them as pretty as you want, but if you can't be bothered, really anything goes. Basically, once you've got a blob of clay out here, all you want to do is pull the wall in, leaving a thickness either side to be the foot. And you don't need a foot on either side, I just prefer it because they're stable and it will catch glaze drips. And if you're dipping, then the glaze will drip on both sides, so it's good to have a foot front and back to catch the drips. So I've got a few test tiles where the foot saved it kicking around so not worth showing those off. And you can put a bit of texture on the surface as well just to see what a more translucent glaze would do based on thickness. I don't put the black slip on immediately just because it's much easier to put it on when the clay is dry enough that it sucks it up rather than at the moment the clay is soft and wet so it won't want to accept it and by brushing it on you'll knock it off centre. So 
what I'll do is I'll set this aside for a couple of hours, come back just with the wheel turning, brush black slip on the back and score the front um, just slightly so that when you get a clear glaze or a translucent glaze you can see what it does in texture. Um, and then a little while after that just take a knife and cut it into sections and they can be as big or as small as you want depending on how interesting the glazes you're testing are uh, it can it's nice having a big test tower sometimes but for straightforward things a small one will do there you go uh, intentionally runny glaze but um had that not had the foot front and back one of those would have stuck to the kiln shelf quite badly 